Thursday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way, ask some questions, and just come and hang out. Uh, so you guys, tonight we are continuing with the Stitch and Pause block from the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. This is the 48th block that we've been working on. So we're on 48 out of 50. <laughs> we're, we're going here. Uh, last night was the first night on this block. We finished the background. Look how cute. I love how that little check turned out. I still think it looks like a little napkin or a little uh, placemat sort of thing. Um, tonight though, we are gonna be transferring our needle turn applique and our embroidery design to the piece and we are going to start the uh, the needle turn applique so that is the plan for tonight needle turn and embroidery are going to take some time uh so uh, you know we'll be doing it for a while so if you have questions you'll have a chance to give it a try uh, and then uh, uh, see what questions you may have once you get started with the needle turn or applique or the needle turn applique or the embroidery. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, start by transferring the design tonight. So I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going here. Agreed. This one is super cute. It's this little bouquet with um, <laughs> these little paws on here. I'm going to pretend they're they're Chad paws, Chad the kitty paws. All right, so I have a little light table here. I did put a link in the post here if you're looking for a light table. This one is super duper old, so they come cheaper and super thin and even um, cordless and stuff now, so I'd, be, I'd check out that link. But if you don't have a light table, you can use a just a bright window. Uh, people have also put like Christmas lights underneath a, py a Pyrex, um, uh, like a casserole dish, so that could work too. So on on this pattern, so I made a photocopy first, and it, there's this little square around that says align with the the A square, and that's that's the square in the middle. So I'm gonna do my best to try and align that. Looks maybe like it's a hair bigger. There we go, about like that. I think I'm gonna stand for this. This feels like I need to stand. Okay, so you could tape this down. I'm gonna attempt to do it without taping. We'll see how that goes. So it is pretty difficult to see through the parts that are actually touching, um, that, are, that are going through all these big seam allowances. So I'm gonna just have this, um, the uh, pattern from the book nearby. Uh, so I can kind of try and draw the rest that I can't see as well. So I'm going to trace everything. So I'm going to trace the embroidery lines and the needle turn applique here. Oh, Gretchen, you love your light table. It really can be used for a lot, can't it? It's just, it just, you know, you never know it, when you need it. It's, it's a handy tool for sure. I'm also using uh, the Fine Line Mark Be Gone. It's my water-soluble ink marker. It's got a nice fine tip here. All right, so here, for example, I'm going over the edge here, and it's I can't really see through the fabric very well anymore, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Uh, the thing is, we will use... Um, it'll be easier to trace onto the the fabric that we'll actually use for the applique and that will help determine the shape so if we can't get some of these appliques perfectly drawn because it's hard to see through the um, fabric there that's not actually going to matter at all really because we will we'll have that shape how we need it i'm just kind of i don't know working my way from one side to the other, I guess. It's actually kind of 
quite a bit on here. All right, we got some little French knot stops in here. Some lazy daisies. There's a second leaf, so this is applique. So I'm gonna be doing all the applique first because that's gonna kind of determine uh, the embroidery a little bit, just like if I'm way off on the applique, then, you know, I won't be overlapping any embroidery. Yeah, they are, Nolan, they are, they're super cheap these days. I remember when I first was looking for a light table, God, it had to be a decade ago, um, at least. They were so expensive and so bulky. We would actually go to this goofy store in town that would just collect a pile of weird items and sell it. So you'd go in there, it's called Axe Man, and you'd go in there and they would just have like, you know, random like an aisle of test tubes or something, like just super weird stuff. And uh, my first light table I got from there and it was just like a, a doctor's, you know, to put like x-rays on, some random thing there. I think I might still have it. I think it just like flickers really badly. It might not even work anymore. But it was so bulky and huge, but oh my god, it was the best thing ever. Because like to get a real light table, oh god, it was like a hundred plus dollars. Now they're like twenty dollars or less and they're huge. They're about this thin, you know, work with LEDs and it, it's just, ugh, man. I would have loved <laughs> loved to have that when I was in, in school still. But yeah, so they they are definitely a bajillion times cheaper than than they were a few years ago. So we will take all this off, all this uh, water soluble ink off. Oh, you use your slider. Oh, you used to. Okay, you love your light box, and you used to use your slider window, a window, Lillian. Yes. So that's totally a way to do it, um, for sure. You just tape. You tape the um, paper up to the window, and then you tape your fabric up, and just trace right through. Totally doable. The nice thing about a light table, besides that you can do it when it's not sunny out, is that you, like, it's always kind of an awkward position to trace on, like, flat against a window like that. Alright, I'm gonna try and do this swoopity doop here. It really, like, I really am having a hard time seeing through my fabric here. So uh, like a, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of like stems and stuff down here. So I'm just trying to I'm looking at the picture and trying to draw. So let's let's get these stem or this uh, like kind of wrapper. And uh, okay, I can see a stem here. This is going to be the big fat stem. There's one that kind of comes out like this. So this we're going to just have to edit a little bit once we get to the embroidery just to look at the photo. All right, then there's a little one that goes in here. There's two that go here. Um, and then there's two extra that kind of come out here. Okay, so I'm totally just kind of sketching. Here we go. I'm just kind of sketching these little bits down here, just looking at the looking at the book again. All right. Same here. I can't quite see. This is kind of like a little ribbon deal there. It's kind of like that. I think it's a little wider. Okay. And then this, this I can actually almost see. It swoops down to about here. Then I can see the rest. Okay, then it swoops up this way and all the way over here. 
that's going to end up being really close to the edge when we're done here. There we go. So <laughs> I kind of put blobs of ink down where I held my pen a little bit too long, but that'll come out once we, once we um, wet this. I think I'm moving a little bit, so all right. Kind of just scooching back into position here. Whew, all right, half done. And we can, I can always turn this off and, and check what we did there. So this maybe I'll have to just clean up a little bit when we embroider. It does actually flatten out a bit there in the drawing, so I think we're actually okay. It's coming along. All right, let's let's just finish up this half, this other half quickly here. Turn the light table back on. Okay, let's just start with this paw. After this, we have a little more light tabling to do. We need to transfer uh, these paws and the leaves over to our fabric that we're going to applique with. Okay, got some flowers up in here. Again, this one that crosses over, I'll get this guy in first, the one that crosses over the border is a little more difficult. I'm getting to it. Okay, let's do these other ones. Okay, I, I can kind of actually see it. It kind of goes right here. Right down here, here. This is the one that I can't really see. We're just going to draw one up there. And then we got three dots in the middle. We'll figure that out when we stitch it. And uh, another one that's kind of out here a little bit. Kind of see a little bits of it. We'll be able to tweak this once we start embroidering too. We're just kind of getting the gist of it down here. All right, and then just, uh, oh, we got this little bow bit here. All right. Oh, this little stem. Big stem here. We are almost there. And three little dots. Let's see, did I miss anything? I think we are good. All right, so I'm going to turn this off. All right, looking cute. Should we mark the leaves A, B, and C? You know what? That probably wouldn't hurt. Um, let's do it. I'm going to mark them. Um, well, you know, I don't actually really need to do that because I can see it right here. Um, but it probably would be a good idea to mark my other pieces, the pieces, uh, once I get this onto um, the other fabric, that I might mark as um, A, B, uh, like all of these, and same with the paw. I might like just mark it in the seam allowance area. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so this we can set aside for now. You know, it was kind of the gist of it all, I think. I think we did an okay job at transferring that. Gosh, now that I look at it, maybe it should be a little bit more centered. But no, I think it's it looks like how it is in the in the pattern. So we're we're good. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Then the next part is we need to actually get these needle turn pieces onto our fabric. 
So I'm going to um, I'm going to just trace them onto our fabric, and I'm wondering if I should press this at all, but. Yeah, I kind of don't think we need to. I'll turn the iron on. We'll, we'll press it just to make sure. But I'm going to trace them on to the right side of the fabric. So this is the wrong side and the right side. It's hard to tell with this particular fabric. And actually, this fabric doesn't have a right or wrong side because uh, it's a batik. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, just know that I am drawing on the right side of the fabric. And I need to leave enough in between pieces so that I have like a good maybe... Uh, you know, a, maybe a hair less than a quarter inch seam allowance, but like at least, let's just say at least a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, so I need to leave like a half inch between all of my pieces here. Okay, the um, iron I think is a little bit warm here, so let's just, let's just give both of these fabrics a little press right away. Just, ooh, and look, I can use, I can go on this side where I'm, I've got all these funny shapes going on anyway. Let's, let's use that side. So this fabric I'm going to use for the leaves, and then that darker fabric, this fabric, um, I'm going to use for the paws. So let's see, let's grab from the oddly shaped area. This looks good. So let's, let's start tracing these leaves. So there we go. I'm going to turn the light table on again. And I think you're right. I think we should label them, but I'm going to try and label them just kind of in the seam allowance area, just so I don't have a big like letter A on the front of my piece. So, all right, I'm going to go eh, about right there. So why we're drawing these lines on is it's first of all it's going to help us cut it out but second of all this is going to be kind of our guideline of where to tuck our edge underneath so we're going to try and match this guideline with the guideline on our uh, larger fabric that we just did or i'm just going to put like an, an a right here there we go so there we go so i drew the leaf and i put a little a and I actually, I put the A kind of where it's right side up. So then I, I'll know that it's right side up now. All right, so I'm going to try and do this B now. And again, I need, I need plenty of space around. I think this is probably enough, but just like, just barely. Okay, that's B. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that really looks like a B. Okay, that's fine. Okay, B. Okay, C is up there. And I need that like good half inch in between. Let's, let's, let's go down here into this little nook. Get all the nooks in here. Here. Okay, this is C and D. Let's get in this little nook. Gosh, we might just get to prepping these tonight. I hope we. I hope we can actually start one of these. I don't think we'll get very far on it, but it'd be nice to at least start one. Although prep is part of the process, it's okay. All right, and I'm gonna just fit in E right here. Again, I need to be like a good half inch or so away, so I'm gonna go a little higher, like right there. All right, wow, There's, there are gonna be quite a few pieces on this. This, this one will take some time. Um, this is, uh, so the, the leaves, there's five leaves, and then there's, a, 
at least there's five parts per paw. Ugh. So that means we got 20, 20 parts total before we even um before we even do the embroidery, which will be, you know, that's at least a day, maybe two days on, on the embroidery. So we'll be working on this feller for a little while. We might actually take a little bit of a break from this guy to work on um, another project coming up here. Um, we're going to be starting that Betts White project um, on the like 24th or so. Okay, so here, all right, let's start at paw one and we'll work out our way through. So here, remember, I cannot, I can't just trace the paw as is. I gotta trace each part. So, um, and, and have our, you know, little seam allowance here. So this isn't gonna look exactly like, like the paw, but I'll have all the parts available. You know, I think I might just have to keep the parts in an area, like all the, the parts from this paw one, I'm going to have to keep together. And then parts from paw two, I'll have to keep together. Oh, man. And these, I'm sure, are all different. I'm going to number these one, two, three, four, so I know what order they go in on the paw, like one, two, three, four. So I'm going to keep this. This is um, paw one. I should maybe label it A, B, C, D. <laughs> but I'm going to, uh, this is this is paw one. And then it's parts in one, two, three, four. Because remember, they got to be, they have to, I need like a good half inch in between each one. So the one, two, three, four will help me remember what order they go in. So here's three. So many tiny pieces. Okay, let's do the second piece here. Yeah, actually we might only get to prepping the pieces today because we're gonna have to cut all these out yet. Okay, this is two. I could just prep one piece and and stitch right away. Like we could we could have just done it that way, but I don't know, for some reason I'm just prepping them all right now. This is one. And actually, you know what? I am going to just trim this. I'll show you guys what I got going on here. And I am going to just trim this and set it aside. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to leave these paws together until I'm ready to stitch them. So this is paw one. I'm going to just trim it out of here. Okay. So here, here's paw one and all of its little paw parts here. So I wanted like a half inch in between because when we cut these out, I'm going to want, you know, like just a hair less than that quarter inch seam allowance. Probably a little less, but at least for the tracing part, I want them together. So, all right, I'm going to just keep this together. You know what? And I'll even write in the, the seam allowance here. This is paw one just in case that one there isn't clear enough. So this is one. Okay, and uh, let's set that to the side. All right, now we need to do the same thing with paw um, two and paw, paw three here. So bear with me while I trace. Actually, why don't I cut these out right away um, just so they're, that this fabric isn't here. So these are our leaves. I'm gonna just trim them as a whole quick. And uh, um, what you'll want to do is we're going to want to, maybe I'll leave these together too, uh, too for now, and then I'll just cut them off as I go. You know what? I think that's how I'm going to treat all of this. I'm going to leave these in groups. Uh, that way I won't get confused. So um, we'll do the other pause just like this. But yeah, so then when we're ready to, when we're actually ready to stitch the A piece, we will cut this out and set the rest aside as a group still. So um, we will have it all together yet. You know what? I think that's the plan. All right, so I'm gonna leave these together. That makes me feel better. <laughs> this, this seemed like just a disorganized shenanigans, like one sneeze and it all goes crazy um, situation. So keeping those together, I think that's gonna help a lot. So let's, let's just trace this, um, 
second paw and then the third paw and trim those out as well. Okay, remember that seam allowance. All right, so this is paw two. This is quite the hefty block as far as time. All right, this is two. I'm labeling it two. As far as time and techniques, I mean, we were using all sorts of techniques in this one. Um, but that's good. We get some practice in, and we're going to have to do it at some point for this quilt. So might as well be now. Jump right in. All right, this is the fourth one. These are probably all so close in size that I probably could do them all the same, but it might be slightly different. Three. That's probably fine. I was a little afraid I wouldn't be able to see the outlines through this fabric, but it's, it's turning out fine. See it just enough. Two and one. We'll just get right down here. Okay, so that is paw number two. Let's trim that out just before it gets confused with the rest. And um, then we will do the third. Okay, so let's just put a two on here somewhere. All right, paw number two. And, uh, oh, you think they're the same, but the centers are different? Yeah, the centers are definitely different. I'm just wondering, yeah, like this this little paw, this little guy here seems like smaller than that guy. So I'm, I'm guessing these are probably all drawn drawn uh, separately, but you know, I'm sure it would get us close enough. All right, let's do this last one. So let's try and get them down here. All right. Yeah, I'm curious about that too, Joe. Do you do a subscription box? I know there's so so many, and they're just really kind of neat. Um, I have not done one before, mostly because I'm trying to get rid of trying to get rid of my fabric, trying to use it all up. Um, oh, you and a friend, Carol, you and a friend have a shoebox of fabric that you send back and forth. That is such a cute idea. Ooh, I like that. Then you can grab stuff and make something out of it, add some more to it and send it back. So some will be gone, but more will be, more will be there. That is cute. I like that. Did I just trace the wrong one? Nah, no, nah, we're fine still. That is a cute idea. Gosh, that sounds like a never ending project though too. <laughs> You keep getting a box with more stuff in that needs to be made. That's that's neat though. It's got to be like a treasure to to find something new in there each time. That's that's cute. That's a cute idea. And then you get fancy mail. That's always fun. All right, one more to get in here. Let's go up here. Ah, that sounds like fun, Carol. All right, last filler here. That's the first one. Okay, and we are traced. And I do think we have enough time to start one, so that's good. I am not gonna start with these paws. These paws seem like the hardest part. So we're gonna do the easy leaves first. 
Um, the leaves actually have quite a bit going on with them as well, but um, we'll give it a go. So here's, here's paw number three. Okay. So we're done with the light table at this point. I'm gonna just scooch that out of the way. Okay, so um, we don't actually need this anymore either. So now we are left with our parts, our fabric parts here, and um, our <laughs> PC arrow, I just totally got. Uh, distracted Jenna, that is so funny. So Jenna says that at a quilt camp she went to, they played cards and would gamble with fat quarters. That is a cute idea. Oh gosh, see, I would, I would freak out. I'd be, I would be so conservative if that was our money. <laughs> our the cute little fat quarters. Okay, so I am going to keep this nearby just because... You know, it is our label, it is our label, because I didn't, you know, actually, now that I'm here, why not label these? We're going to cover them up anyway, right? So let's, let's just label them. A, B, these are going to be covered up with fabric, so I don't know why I was hesitant to, to label them. C, uh, D, and E, and we'll label these one two and three okay there we go now we have a functional thing here so all right let's start with the a piece so a few other things i'm going to have nearby is i have some applique pins here comes in this cute little case these are by clover and i think you can see the logo on there there we go and uh, um uh, the neat thing about applique pins is that they're just really short. So the the big um, a big long needle is just not going to get in the way while you while you stitch. Um, all right, and then the other thing we need to get Zeb here out. Zeb is our little pin cushion from Fish Museum and Circus, and Zeb happens to hold all my needles. We are looking for oh look at this one's crazy bent. Um, but we are looking for our straw needle. Let's use this one. I think this is my replacement one. So uh, these straw needles, they are super thin and long. Um, I, I believe these are size 11. Size 11 straw or Milner's needles. And just to show you the difference between an embroidery needle uh, or the embroidery needles that we typically use and then just like a normal sharps needle which is just like your normal needle that you'd get from uh like a like any like a sewing kit like from a hotel or something so that this is a normal like universal sharps is what they're called a sharps needle so here's the embroidery needle that we usually stitch with so it has a much bigger eye and it's longer um and then this is a milner's or a straw needle and the key feature is that it's super long again. So uh, it's just that extra length makes it easier to stitch for needle turn applique. And I get a, I get a pretty thin one. I'm gonna just lay these down here. I get a pretty thin one for needle turn applique. So you can just really pick up just the tiniest amount of threads when you're stitching. So this is a size 11, which is thin, compared to like this embroidery needle, which is a size five. So the bigger the number the fatter it gets. So this is a size, it's either a size 10 or 11, I can't uh, remember for sure. Um, it is bent a little because it is so thin, so I have a few on hand. Um, it actually doesn't get so bent from the needle turn. Where I'm bending them is doing um, English paper piecing. When I do the English paper piecing, that seems to bend them a little bit more, but it's okay if they're a little bit bent. All right, so sticking the pin or the needle back into Zeb here. He can go hang out behind me. And uh, all right, we need some thread. So let's grab, I'm going to just grab uh, the thread. I think you want to match what your front color is. Um, I'm just, this is just kind of like that, one of those tan colors that we've been using for um, just sewing. Uh, this is a size 50 thread. 
Uh, I know people like, for needle turn applique, I don't have any, but people like even using 80 weight thread, so 80 is even thinner. So thin and strong and, you know, delicate. That's what we're kind of going for with, um, with this needle turn applique. So I'm going to just get a little bit, I don't want a ton. I have, I have about a foot of thread here, so like 12 inches or so. It gets, uh, maybe a little bit more just in case, it gets a little unruly if you have, like it wants to keep twisting and get into knots and stuff if you use too much. So, all right, I just cut a, a length of thread. So let's, let's, um, let's trim this out first. So I'm going to trim this A piece. First, I'm going to just separate it from the rest of the pack here. So I'm going to cut right in the middle here. There we go. And I'm going to set the rest of it aside. Okay, so now I'm going to trim my piece. So I have maybe a little bit more than an eighth, like maybe like three sixteenths worth, less than a quarter inch, but more than an eighth worth of seam allowance here. So I'm just going to go around the piece like this. And then the other other way as well. Okay. All right, now what we're going to try and do to just start out is we want to match this piece up, this fabric piece up with our piece right here. So I, I have the A piece is right side up, so I know it doesn't go this way. It goes where I, I wrote the A right side up. Um, and I am going to lay that on top of there and try and just match up the points. And then I'm going to put a pin right in the middle there. Where do I get my yarn or do I have a stash of yarn? Right now, I just kind of have a stash of yarn that I'm trying to use up. It kind of depends. Sometimes depends if I want to be fancy or not, really. Um, you know, yarn like fabric is not a cheap thing once you start digging into it, right? But like the more fancy the yarn gets, like the more like mohair or silky or whatever it is, um, oh, it is a pleasure to work with. It is just so beautiful and juicy and lovely to work with fancy yarn and it just really makes you feel fancy. Um, <laughs> So uh, last time I purchased yarn, uh, if I need it for like a quick project, just the color, I'll just go to like Joann's and grab what I, I need if I just need to get an effect across. But, um, you know, if I'm traveling and I see some yarn, I will at a, at a boutique and it feels just like fancy and lovely. I might get it from there. I don't really have a go-to place that I go. Um, the last fancy yarn that I bought was from Pearl Soho when we visited there and oof, if you want some fancy yarn and some lovely patterns to stitch up they are they they do a good job there fancy yarn though that there's nothing like really isn't anything better than knitting with the fanciest yarn that exists. <laughs> your, get your prettiest yarn out and just knit with it. It just feels so good in your hands to, to do that versus just like like a cheap acrylic yarn or something. Uh, Bonnie, I don't have the sheep done. I've been thinking about it a lot lately though. Um, it's not a super relaxing project. <laughs> it is, but like, you know, I can't like watch a movie or TV while I do it. I have to pay attention to it because there's a lot that I, I've not done with before, like a lot of increases and decreases and a lot of stitches that I haven't done before. So I have to really pay attention. And I, so I haven't, I just haven't sat down to do that. I think all I have left, I just, I have to make the tail uh, and then I have to make that the, the, um, I have to make that pillow part that goes on the inside. So I have to make, I have to get like some black fabric or something and make like a pillow insert for it. Then I got to sew up to the bottom, like with a, a Kitchener stitch, Kitchener stitch. That's what it's called. Right. And then, um, 
then I gotta do the feet. So that's, in theory, it's not really all that much, but it still is, like, I'm gonna have to look up how to do every step still. <laughs> okay, you guys, I just tied uh, just a little knot in the end of um, my thread here. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna start on a straight edge, like, as much as I can. Like, I don't wanna start right at this tip. I'm gonna start at a straight edge. So what I'm gonna do, I mean, we don't really have a straight edge, but we have like a, a slow sloping arc. That's easier than starting right at a point. So I am going to, I'm gonna actually tuck it under and you can get your fingers out and do that. I'm gonna start about right here like a little bit away from the point. And what I'm trying to do is I'm folding it to, I'm folding it to the line that we marked on top here, on our on our fabric here. <laughs> Nolene, I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually, I was telling my mom about this because because she she mentioned, she asked me if, if my sheep was done yet too. And <laughs> Noel, uh, Nolene's saying it could be a finished Friday project. Uh, I'm almost a little too scared to do it <laughs> for a finish it Friday because I, first of all, I'm not as comfortable with, with, um, with, uh, knitting, but there's so many like little nuancey things that I'm not sure I'm going to get right, but maybe that's all the better reason to do it, do it for a finish it Friday project. We'll just see. Maybe that, maybe we'll have to do that for finish it Friday. <laughs> All right, you guys, I am, oh, there's so many. The list is growing for the, what we need to do for Finish It Friday. I keep adding new projects. That's got to stop. We got to actually do something. We got to finish something one of these Fridays. All right, I'm coming up from the back of the fabric, and you can see I'm going through the back fabric, but I'm also catching you know, a couple threads on the edge of my piece here. So there we go. And I'm going to just go around that point again. So I'm going to go in the back fabric and then to the, just grab like a couple threads and then, then the front fabric again. And, and I'm literally just like catching like two threads here. <laughs> yeah, we can help. Uh, Noli says that's, I think maybe that's, that's uh, what I need. Couldn't chit chat and focus. <laughs> uh, well, it would just be me like kerflummox or something something Bonnie, um, is what it would end up being, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? That might be a good idea. I could use some help through that. Just, um, seeing, you know, it might be me going on my phone to look up videos on how to do stuff, but <laughs> if you want to hang out with me while I try to figure it out, then uh, yeah, we should bring that project again. I, it's, it's staring at me lately. And uh, you're the second person who, who's asked about it lately, including my mom. So maybe that means it's time to bring it up again. <laughs> All right, so we've gone through that stitch again. We're gonna make our first stitch now. So I'm kind of holding, I, I'm actually gonna tuck under more of this, this, um, this seam allowance. And I'm just, I'm taking the needle and I'm, I'm tucking it under. So I'm just tucking it uh, along um, that, so I get the, I get, my line here. So I'm folding it right along that line and I'm trying to match that line up with that background line that we did earlier. See, so I have the front line and the back line kind of matched up now. So um, I'm going to hold that there with my thumb and uh, I'm going to go in to the same place that we just left before and then I'm going to come up about a stitch length away, which is eh, maybe an eighth of an inch or so, and I'm going up through the back of the fabric and the front of the fabric at the same time. And that's our first stitch. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to go directly across from where we just were, just into the back of the fabric. And I'm going to come up in the back and the front of the fabric again. See? Like that. So that's my next stitch away. And there we go. And so that is your needle turn applique stitch. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to, when, when um, your piece isn't tucked under anymore, it's time to just tuck the next section. Um, needle turn applique because we're turning this edge over with our needle. 
All right, I have the next part kind of set up here, and I'm still trying to match it with the back of the fabric too, so I'm just kind of wiggle things around. All right, and let's get our next couple of stitches in. So it's easy on these kind of like long straightaways to tuck a bunch at once and, you know, like, see I'm doing two, two stitches in one go. Uh, when it comes to like these tight curves and stuff like that, we are not going to be able to do that anymore. We might be just tucking one and then, then putting one stitch to hold it in place and then doing another and putting one stitch. But here it's kind of a nice straightaway, so it's working fine. And sometimes you can just get your whole hand in there, your whole whole finger and tuck it under. So we're coming up to that, that point. I'm going to just kind of keep my points matched, the front and back point. And there we are. I think I can probably stitch to the end. I'm going to stitch to the point. Oh, we're going to get one leaf on here today. I'm so excited. This feels good. I haven't done needle turn applique in a while. So I'm, it's going to be a little bit getting into it again. And that's why I'm doing these leaves first. First, it's just a little bit easier. And actually, I just watched someone posted. Oh, I forget who. Let me know if you're here. Um, I don't even know who the artist is, but um, some needle turn applique videos. And I'm going to look at those again because uh, I started watching those and they were really helpful. And I think I'm doing it a little differently than she did. And, and I want to give that a go. So this, this first leaf is kind of how I have been doing it lately. And uh, um, we will test out that other method too. It's actually pretty much the same method. There's just some good tips in there. So, all right, I'm right at the point now, and I am going to go, like how we did at the beginning here, I'm going to go through that point again, just to kind of solidify its spot here. Okay, so there we go. That second, that second turn is kind of locking that in place. And you know, at, at this point, I'm going to remove the pin. I don't really need that there anymore. I'm actually going to put it back in here so I don't lose it somewhere. Okay. And, uh, well, let's just take a look at this to start out. We have our first little arch going there. Okay. So let's see if I remember how to do a point. So I think the first thing I want to do, yeah, again, this day one today is going to be like remembering how to do it. And then I'll probably look up how to do it again. So I want to kind of flatten out this point like that so that, um, you know, I have that, that double stitch here. So that's kind of holding that in place. And then this, I'm just kind of flattening out. And then we just want to tuck it under again for the second half. You can trim some excess off, but I think I'm just going to leave it for now. We're just going to start tucking. And uh, since I did that double stitch at the end here, that point, that point should stay pretty well. So I'm going to go in that same spot again, just the back of the fabric. And I'm holding this fabric in place. I am going to, oop, I'm going to come up. at just like a, that little stitch length away again, we are going to hold all that bulk onto the inside of this leaf. There's a, there I just did one stitch. Now let's start folding the rest of this under again. Again, I'm folding it along the line and then matching it to, to the line. And you can always kind of poof it up a little bit if you tuck too much. All right, that looks pretty well matched. Let's get some more stitches in here. That's gonna be cute. Oop, caught the edge here. All 
right, see, this is why we wanted that extra, you know, quarter inch on the edge here, because I'm really handling it quite a lot. Actually, the piece, let's give this a try. I think in that video that I watched, she had it laying flat on the table, which makes sense, because what if you have a whole huge quilt? You're not going to be able to get your hand in here like this. So let's pretend, um, let's pretend I'm on a flat, well, I'm not pretending, I am on a flat surface here. And now I'm just going to kind of tuck it under. I think I can still do my in and out, like into the back, and then out again right from this position. Yeah, this kind of makes sense, because then I can use the table to press down, and uh, um, I can hold everything in place a little bit easier. So let's let's try and make this comfortable. Right now it's not 100% comfortable, but I get, I get the idea of it that this is a good idea to just have it on the actual table here. So let, I'm lining up my edges, I'm folding the edges. I think I need to just be up higher. There, my shoulders were a little too scrunched. Now nah, I'm standing up again, which, you know, in theory I would just do it on a little lower table, but I'm, I can see what I'm doing here now, at least. Come on, needle. There we go. Oh, it's gonna be so cute. There is just something so adorable about needle turn applique, and, I'll, and you'll be able to see it in a sec once we have this completely stitched down. Needle turn just floats on the top, and it's because we are just stitching down this edge, so nothing is holding it down on the inside here, um, and it's just being poofed up from the fabric underneath the this, this seam allowance that we're tucking under that's just pushing on the front of the fabric. So everything ends up looking kind of raised and it's just adorable. All right, so I'm, I'm crossing this over again. We did leave a little bit here to be tucked under yet. There, so there's our kind of our, our tip right here. Let's just keep going around. Our baby stitches. Oh, an instructor of yours rolls the extra fabric instead of bunching it up. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and become comfortable with this idea of it on the table. We're we're testing a new theory here. I'm I'm testing if I like the idea of like if there's if there's some benefit to not holding it to just like laying it flat and making our stitches. So. Uh, we're trying something, trying something new here. We got a few more. Let's tuck that a little bit more. There we go. A few more stitches to the end here. I mean, my body's in an awkward position here so far, or for sure right now. So that's something's not doing something quite right but it's actually kind of going quite fast and it is nice to hold it flat against the table while I'm working. That, that is kind of nice. All right, I'm getting that point now. So again, this point, I'm going to put that double stitch in. So to do that again, I'm, I'm coming up to the point there and I'm going to go, come on, I'm going to go through that point again, like from the back from the back to the front. You think with the table method, the background fabric stays flatter. Lucy, I suspect you are totally right for that. Uh, to me, this already feels a bit flatter. So that's kind of nice. Actually, I can't grab this. I need to pick it up now. There we go. <laughs> Maybe every once in a while you need to stick a hand underneath there. All right, there, that double stitch is in, which kind of locks, locks that point. So now all we need to do is tuck the rest of this under. In theory, I should have maybe started a little up higher, um, just because this is maybe a lot to tuck in right here. 
but let's just give it a go. I'm going to just try and stuff it in. You know, I'm trying to do that flattening thing and then bringing it in, but again, I don't think I left myself enough leeway. We're just going to stuff it right in there. That works. All right, I think I'm going to pick it up just to finish it off. I want to make sure that I got enough stuffed in there and I want my fold to go over all everything that I stuffed. A little bit there yet. All right, I'm going to finish these off with a couple stitches. Ugh, there's just a little bit of bulk there that I don't like. Let's see if I can flip that underneath yet. Yep, Tracy, this is needle turn applique. We are starting our needle turn tonight, but don't worry, we will be doing it for a whole pile more nights. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wonder if you could do needlepoint applique on a hoop. I am not sure, Noeline. I, I feel like that might just jumble things up even more, but I'm not sure. Oh, you know, I've seen that Georgie before, someone using a wet toothpick to grab the fabric. I think they would suck on the toothpick and then help that, like, turn under. I don't know. I don't know. The idea of sucking on a toothpick kind of freaks me out a little bit. I don't know. All right, so that was my last stitch. So I'm going to just go into that stitch again like I've, I was doing at the points and at the beginning. That'll just kind of lock my last stitch in place. And then I'm going to just go bring it to the back. And then we're going to just tie a little knot. So let's flip this around. And we'll just even grab some of the back of this um, thread of this fabric here and just kind of tie, tie a knot. I still, I say this every time I do this, but I don't know quite what the best practices are for tying knots in the back with thread. <laughs> I should um, look that up specifically. Okay, so here we are, our first little leaf, and it is so cute. Um, I can tell that this is my first leaf. I got some little points happening in here, uh, but we'll we'll get better at that. And I do actually think this um, table method uh, worked pretty well. I'm just gonna try and poof this out of the hair. But all in all, I think that looks excellent. So let me um, lift you guys up here a little bit. That is all we are going to do tonight for sure. Um, you know, this needle turn takes some time. Oop. All right. There we go. But that is awfully adorable. So, all right. So that is our first little leaf. We'll definitely go around the loop and do these other leaves uh, before moving on to the paws, just because they are easier. Um, when you have inner curves, like this paw, inner curves or inner points, those are a little bit more difficult, I think. And uh, I mean, these outer points are kind of, um, can be a little bit difficult, but I think we did okay here. Um, yeah, so we'll use these other four leaves to, to get our needle turn practiced, and then we'll start doing these tiny little ovals and you know I think that's they scare me a little bit but I think we'll be we'll be practiced by then oh I know the paws are so tiny aren't they Lucy like they really are these itty bitty 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 bitties you know like a, a tiny <laughs> fingernail so all right uh, I, I think I'm, I'm I'm happy we kept these together like this and labeled it that is really gonna actually make it a whole lot easier for us and same with these paws keeping all these paws together before trimming them um, now you know even if these pieces get blown everywhere I'm going to know exactly what they are right away so yay I'm I'm stoked I think this color looks pretty uh, this is going to be good I like it all right you guys I'm going to flip you around and we will call this an evening but I am so stoked for needle turn all right you guys this is you know, I, I get excited about needle turn applique. It's always a little daunting and it always scares me a little bit, but this is one of those things with quilting that 
feels like how knitting and crochet feel to me. Like to me, like knitting is just so chill and you know, except for my, my sheep project that I'm working on that has a lot of stuff that I don't know what I'm doing with, but like in general, just the little needles um, going together just to knit is so calming. And I have, this is the only thing um, with quilting that has that exact same feeling, this needle turn applique, I think. Once you just really like, you know, I think we'll feel it tomorrow once we just start with it right away, you know, not doing all this prep work, but just like tucking it under and putting that one little stitch in and tucking, I just think it is relaxing, relaxing. Like I could see having a whole really big project, you know, one of those projects that you know is going to take you 20 years to finish, but it's just around. So you have something to do with your hands. Like I think needle turn applique would be fun for that. Ah, it's going to be cute. I'm excited, if you can't tell. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, we will continue the needle turn applique tomorrow. Uh, I think we'll probably be able to get two of these leaves done. You know, it's going to take its time to get done, but but we're, we're, put, we're plugging in the hours here. Um, so we'll get it done. So, all right, we will be on that tomorrow. Uh, I will get this up on YouTube just so you, if you wanted to give it a try or do all the prep work um, and you wanted to watch the video again, it'll be there on Penguin and Fish Movies. And uh, I will be back here on Penguin and Fish on Facebook tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central. So have a fabulous uh, Friday tomorrow, you guys, and have a great evening. Good night.